networks adopt procure system. SEPA needs funding for Mount Senevit. And Morbis Education Focus. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Wednesday's news. Work Secretary David Wehrer says the department is aligning itself with better reforms to ensure funding is put to use for better roads in the country. Wehrer says the department has tightened up its procurement process, a key dilemma in funding for rehabilitation or construction of new roads. The Work Secretary told MTV News funding has been consistent and major projects are on target to connect PNG by building improved road networks. Speaking to MTV News, the work secretary outlined key reforms the department will implement this year. Secretary Wera says works is putting more effort to tighten its role. Wera says reforms will push its agenda to ensure road networks are improved. The key is the systems of governments must be responsive. The key is procurement is key. We have a centralized uh, procurement system and uh, every time there is a delay of one month, delay of uh, two, three months, especially when the loans are funding this. The fees and charges are big. On top of the debt servicing, we are paying the, paying the fees and charges. So uh, one of the issues is to see that systems of government are responsive. Building roads has cost the government millions. Secretary Wera says though the country's economy is burdened, consecutive governments have remained committed to fund road projects. He says funding is crucial to build quality roads. We have received all that was budgeted and we have spent. So that's a really a positive sign and sign of government honoring its commitments to see that our highways are accessible to business and uh, people uh, that are using the highways for uh, various uh, uh, purposes. Uh. Mm. Speaking on changes, the Work Secretary says Parliament has pushed an important bill and passed it last year. This will see Works Department working closely with the National Roads Authority going forward. Uh, the National Road Authority and Works Department will now match. NRA will no longer be a uh, road uh, agency. Um, there is the idea was to have a single uh, road management authority, uh, uh, or one one organisation that is accountable to all the roads in the country. That was the idea. So we have separated the road fund with the road management uh, functions and responsibilities. Jack Lapower Junior, National MTV News. Minister for Environment, Conservation and Climate Change, Wera Mori, has made a statement that the government should release funds for the Mount Sinovit cyanide residue contamination cleanup in East New Britain. The aftermath of the mining at Mount Sinovit is posing a greater threat to the environment and the people living around the area. This came after a survey was conducted on the area a week ago. And conditions and all other issues can be a week ago, a team from SEPA, including the Minister for Environment, Conservation and Climate Change, Wera Mori, and SEPA's Managing Director, Gunther Joku, flew to East New Britain to survey the condition of the mine at Mount Sinivit. The survey has shown shocking results of the dangers this mine is posing to the 50,000 people that live around the project area. With roads deteriorating and the contamination of nearby rivers, such as the Warangoi River. We have a mine that has been abandoned by Nigini Gold, where there are exposed fresh cyanide, but also cyanide that are in solution in the vet ponds where they were in the process of extracting gold. There are 27 lying and they are very, very dangerous, especially when the taps that were used at the bottom of those vet ponds to prevent the leaching 
link, the linking of uh, leaking of cyanide into the underground, into the you know, into the regolithon, eventually make into the you know watershed uh, into the water system. The mine was abandoned in 2014 by an Australian mining company called New Guinea Gold Limited. We may ask, why hasn't SEPA since this six years ago? Why now? It all comes down to one thing, funding. The environment minister said there was no funding then, so nothing was done to help protect the environment and people. Minister Mori says this will cause an environmental disaster and SEPA wants to avoid that. Therefore, I will be making an NEC cabinet submission seeking in the vicinity between seven and a half and nine million kina to basically undertake this exercise. I was fortunate that one of the companies that does have the technology to do such, I was accompanied by them a two side who helped us to actually um, take the aerial shot using the drone and we were able to monitor the data and basically um, establish what we need to do. SEPA will be presenting the project to the NEC next week. This situation requires urgent attention. Therefore, funding from the government should be made available as soon as possible. Gertrude Gabi, National MTV News. Marbe Governor Gintan Sanu says the Marbe Provincial Government still maintains its position for a safer tailings disposal method for the Wafi Gopu project. Sanu agreed to the recently signed environment agreement in principle between the national government and the developer to allow preparatory work to begin. He said his agreement was on the basis that consultations would continue for alternative ways of disposing mining waste apart from the deep sea tailings disposal method. With the agreement Signed, Sanu said MPG would now be focusing on establishing ILGs and business structures for the province and landowners. Bank South Pacific CEO Robin Fleming says Kina Bank's acquisition of Westpac Bank will not be healthy for Papua New Guinea's banking sector as there will be less competition and very limited choices for customers. Speaking to MTV News yesterday, CEO Fleming said having only two commercial banks operating in the country would disadvantage customers greatly given the current challenges experienced with commercial banks in terms of operating ATMs and FPOS machines. Bank South Pacific is concerned about Kina Bank acquiring Westpac Bank operations in PNG. BSP CEO Robin Fleming says after Kina Bank's acquisition of ANZ Bank's commercial, retail and SME businesses recently, acquiring Westpac Bank as well would not be healthy for commercial banking in the country. Mr. Fleming referred to Fiji as an example, which has a population of just under 1 million and has six commercial banks operating, giving customers a lot of choices for banking products and services. To then remove, to reduce that to two banks, I don't think is going to provide the consumer with adequate choice from a retail product perspective, the availability of products, the number of channels and choice that they have for ATMs and FPOS would then reduce to two. Given PNG's population of about 9 million and with limited banking services available, having only two banks operating in the country would mean lesser customer choices over a less geographic spread. And a concentration to two banks won't necessarily provide the active competition which is needed to stimulate um, innovation and to stimulate product and service availability all around PNG. BSP has 44 branches, 40 odd sub branches, and out of those 80 odd branches and sub branches, in all 60 of those, we're the only bank. And again, I don't think that's going to be healthy to have further concentration of two banks and a less geographic spread of the availability of services. 
Having visited BSP branches in the East Sipic province last week, CEO Fleming says BSP seems to be the only bank operating in those rural locations where there is a lot of demand for banking services. I took the opportunity to travel to Sipic last week. Haitapi, we're the only bank. Marprik, we're the only bank and we are looking to see if we can get a, a bigger operation in Marprik to meet the demand of customers in that area, which is very vibrant, a lot of agriculture. Yunguru, we're the only bank. And Gorham, asking for banking services. And that demand needs to be met by more than one bank. National Development Bank Chairman Michael Mell also raised concerns recently regarding Kina Bank's acquisition of Westpac Bank, willing to make an offer to purchase Westpac Bank. Recent attempts by MTV News to interview relevant authorities from Kina Bank and Westpac Bank on the acquisition have been unsuccessful. Dennis Orere, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more of the day's stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Morabe Education Division is working towards Governor Ginsan Saono's vision to leave no child behind in education. The province is in the forefront with the 366 education policy as well as the development of the Ford Centre in Leh to minimise high school dropouts in the Momase and Highlands regions. Students have already started enrolling at the Ford Center in Leh. Apart from taking in students, the center will also be the printing center of Ford materials for the Momose and Highlands regions. The Morabe Education Division is working in line with the provincial government's vision to leave no child behind in education. Morabe's provincial education advisor, Keith Tangui, said space will not be an issue for students. Nobody has to stay home and say, I don't have a space. No, there's space available in all the food centers to enroll. So that is a good news for Morabe province. And our, our leaders are very, very uh, happy to help them. Even the Minister of Education said that uh, food center, no fees. The Education Department is now using food centers to minimize the number of dropouts in the country each year. Mr. Tango is pushing for each high school in the province to have a food centre attached to it as part of this national initiative. Our, our main aim is to uh, establish one food centre per high school in the whole province so that we've got food centres also attached there. And teachers from that high school can become tutors to help the, the students there. So they can be paid extra allowance. So I have already instructed uh, Mrs. Jacobs, our national food co coordinator at Eriku, to work on the, uh, that so that we can roll it out quickly this year. The education uh, division in the uh, province has uh, also started here. preparatory yeah, work on the 366 education policy. Mr. Tangu said the policy is expected to roll out in all schools in the province by next year. Uh, the 366 policy is newly born uh, last year in uh, 2020 and we already went ahead to make awareness to the community. Uh, we haven't done a lot of uh, major work on that, but we're just earmarking uh, several schools who will take in the uh, uh, 366 models. So many of our schools will be in the elementary sector. We're changing all the names of elementary to early childhood center. Charlene Airy, National MTV News, Lee. Meanwhile, Mr. Tangui said children with special needs are also included in the Morabe Education Division's vision to leave no child behind in education. He said the Special Education Resource Centre in Leh is under the division's curriculum and is purposely for children with special needs. Also part of the system. We are not allowing any students who are you know, having an impairment, like hearing impairment or whatever problem, must not be left out. They must be part of our system. So they have to be coming out to us. The parents have to bring them to us and say, this is our physically impaired child. We want him to be part of the school system. 
and we will take special note of that and assist them when necessary. We've got Special Education Research Centre, where Gentamo Head Start School, they're already operating in Eriku, they are part of our curriculum. So the curriculum is made in such a way that inclusiveness is also embedded in there. Defence Minister Solon Merisim says allocation in the 2021 budget will focus on training facilities and address the ageing workforce. In his first visit to the fire service department, Minister Merisim spoke highly of empowering the fire service. He says the fire service has been overlooked over the years and needs urgent attention. Over the years, the fire service has been criticised of its role and responsibilities. Speaking yesterday at the fire service headquarters in Port Mosby, Minister Responsible Solan Mirisim says focus this year will be on recruitment to address the aging workforce. He says its systems must change for a better output. Most of our firefighters have reached their retirement age that I am away and we need to retire them through our retirement exercise. In doing so, we also need to boost our manpower, thus need to recruit new vibrant young firefighters to have a have a continuity in our service in serving our community and the government of today. Minister Mirisim further elaborated that the current government has earmarked budget allocation to the fire service department. Mirisim says though less attention is given to the department in the past years, it is better to start somewhere and improve the fire service in the country. He says this year is no different and work must begin. One area that I want us to look into is the training facilities. We need to upgrade and rehabilitate the training facilities so we can start recruit young people. Meanwhile, the head of the fire service department says a target for this year is to further partnership with provincial governments to establish fire service in provinces. He says this has been slow in the past. The chief fire officer urges provincial governments to partner with the department. New activities that we would like to do is to establish new fire stations and MOUs with uh, provincial fire stations and creating new uh, fire stations in provinces where there is no fire stations. Although we don't have the money, but we know that if we can be able to get the reverence of all the provincial governments and sign MOUs, then we can partner together to establish fire stations where there is no fire stations. Jack LaPava Jr., National MTV News. Over the past two weeks, members of the public in Leh have called for a ban on alcohol beverages, whilst others called on the government to review laws governing the production, sale and consumption of alcohol. This follows concerns raised by seven communities on the widespread abuse of alcohol at home and in public places. The city Lord Mayor and the chairman of the Liquor Licensing Board, James Kay, said the board will carry out an investigation, followed by closure notices to companies not complying with the government government's requirements. For the past two weeks, MTV spoke to residents of seven communities in Leh on alcohol abuse and its impact in the society. They said the consumption of alcohol in the past is different from today concerning the new brands of alcohol produced, sold and distributed in the country. Red Wincia and Bagarag Street community. Lingik Piginini or some 12 year old, or junior youth, yeah, 12 year old, 13, 14, 15. Now, Pigini man on the merry old drink. Inside the market to me, blah, sabon drink, bag and bag, plenty of provisions, blah, blah. Our system of government, blah, blah, blah. Our system of government, blah, blah, blah. Why me talk? Government, blah, 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 blah. Lay police boss Chris Kunyanban also confirmed that most of the complaints reported using the police emergency number is alcohol related. Alcohol related incident is more than what is uh, recorded on the toll free and on our OB. So as much as possible I would like uh, when it's a positive approach by companies in cooperation with us and we go out and we carry out our own. The residents, especially women, said the abuse of alcohol in the communities is common among the young people. This morning, Chairman of Morbis Provincial Liquor Licensing Board and Lay City Lord Mayor James Kay says there has been no liquor control over the past five years due to no existing board. Kay said, with the concerns raised by the public, the board will have to carry out an investigation into the abuse of alcohol in Morobe, especially Lay. We must talk about law, work, work in my further investigation, go through, now, wanting really a cause, how I'm caused, 
Now, one in heavy walk, let me walk, let me Almost go inside now, looking through now. Sambla Liga, where he selling Sambla all drinks, where Emine Gutla, you must too, must close him. Morbe Governor Ginsen Saunu also supported a call from the public and said further actions would be taken against the alcohol companies who do not comply with the government's rules and regulations. This is a nuclear, nuclear drink, he cannot buy him the cheaper price. Now, this again, I think that he must do something about it. I think it's good that you bring him along uh, public and everybody always now. So I think as a responsible government, we would. We want uh, you know peace in the community. So uh, this is something. I mean, now yet new player come up now. Maybe I must make him some something. Julie Badui, Oa, National MTV News, Lay. New Power officially handed over three water tanks to Rare Rare Ward 13 in Hiru Rural LLG today. Rare Rare has been facing problems in accessing clean and fresh water for a long time. New Power is working in partnership with the community to provide people a basic need. New Power's Community Investment Program has been a significant step towards accomplishment. It's bid to play a major role in community partnership. So far, six tanks has been donated by New Power. Ward Councillor Nao Iru thanked the company for a great initiative in providing the community with basic needs. Our gathering here today is to receive ownership of New Power's kind donation of water tanks that will be used to harness fresh water from the rain. However, my thankfulness is not to watch the tank, but I want to give credit to the frontline workers of New Power, who are the very source of our daily place and needs. They are the people who are with us daily. The Rara main village is separated from the mainland and is only accessible by a footbridge connected to Kampa Roundabout. New Power External Affairs Manager Wellington Bellawa said they will continue with the programs in the coming years. This is the last of the 2020 program. Uh, as you can see, the woes of water supply and you can see the, the women they are struggling with their containers every day is what concerns us. We are a very small company, we are not ExxonMobil, but we'd like to, our motto is to interact with the community to uh, give what they see as their need and support them in that area and we see Providing clean water supply is, is an enhancement to, uh, to life. The timely intervention of new power into rare, rare water wars will be a boost for the women folks because they will now have access to water at their close proximity. Esther Thailam, National MTV News. Usino Bundi MP Jimmy Uguro has put efforts into supporting law and order programs in his electorate by purchasing another police vehicle to assist Ramu police in Medang. The vehicle will add to the already existing number of vehicles police have to carry out policing duties in Usino Bundi. The vehicle was presented last Saturday, including the launch of a number of projects carried out in the district. A huge crowd gathered at Ramu Station to witness the launching of eight projects initiated by the District Development Authority. Local MP Jimmy Yuguro presented two vehicles, one to Ramu Police while another to Gustav Health Centre. He also opened a new mess for the Ramu Vocational Centre funded by the district, including water and electricity projects, inland fish farming and sewing machines for women's groups. And I never met a fish in farmers, with a thank you officials minister from last year. And he gave me 200,000 to help him with fish farmers. I think 32 fish farmers from district for me. That's about 200,000 now he him. More than 100,000 Kina was also given as support funds to assist Ramu Technical Center, Ramu AOG Church, and a number of projects. A 5 million Kina funding was also secured by Jimmy Yuguro to continue the district's Kappa project. This is a 5 million Kina. 
The district also purchased 200 electric sewing machines for women's groups to train women on sewing skills in order to assist women sewing merry blouses or other clothes. The district will purchase another 200 sewing machines later on. These sewing machines come under the Electrates SME program. 200 back on 200 back on police. Public like it's another 200 plus. So I'm making one one census division. You must get at least around 40 plus or something. The album will come along. Training one time now. Same time you. Some of them will approach me. Masa Luis, National MTV News, Medeng. And now looking at the NAS fund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina will buy 0 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3536 Australian dollars, 0.3793 New Zealand dollars and 28.09 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading lower, coffee and cocoa closed higher and copra closed lower. Palm oil closed higher, crude oil is trading lower and copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower and the All Ordinaries is trading lower. Chukai Sports is next and details after the break. Tukai Sports Welcome to Tukai Sports. The 2021 season of the Interest Super Cup will take its toll on the SPPNG Hunters playing group. Factors such as injuries and suspensions might be the determining factor shaping the outcome of the Hunters season. To counter this, Hunters coach Matthew Church has selected a balanced squad consisting of players who he believes can better execute the team's game plans. With a long and grueling season awaiting the SPPNG Hunters, the ability of the team to feel its best starting 13 consistently will not be expected. Factors such as injuries, illnesses and suspensions will play their part in shaping the side and affecting their performances on the field. So yeah, that sort of allows. Hunters coach Matthew Church stated that competition for places is necessary as it builds a healthy competitive spirit in the 29 member squad. At the same time, stamping out any sense of complacency amongst the playing group. I guess if you go into a mindset of what your best 13 looks like, you, you don't know what's going to happen and the training accidents and, and collisions and trial matches tend to uh, ruin that. Uh, I have a fair idea, guys are, I want to play in certain positions and, and how they're going to go and yeah, we've got a, a number of young guys who are really pushing a, pushing their case, which is which is what we want to see at the Hunters. So, if any of those guys that are you know more experienced that, um, aren't finding it as important to, to work hard in their position, then they'll have their position taken from them from one of these younger guys. And Coach Church has had a great say in the selection of players for the 2021 season, allowing him to identify specific type of players he believes will better serve the Hunters' style of play. I probably didn't have the luxury when I first got the job in, um, for the 2020 season to pick the squad that came into camp. Um, so it was for me, it was slightly out of balance on how I like to pick my team. So the benefit of 2021 season was I got to watch the whole of the Digicel Cup and, and put together a squad that I thought was a lot more well balanced of how we wanted to play. And yeah, I guess we saw the, the changes at NRL level that um, the rules changed the game quite dramatically after the COVID break. Um, so yeah, we have the luxury of being able to then modify that and, and, and choose players on the basis of how I think that um, we, we want to play in 2021. Huxley Lovai, Chukai Sports. 
SPP and the Hunters coach Matthew Church has been impressed with a mixture of players in the Hunters 2021 squad. Church is largely impressed with Snakes Tigers left centre Jokedi Bire, who he believes reminds him of Justin Olam. Running away. This could be the SPP and the Hunters next breakout star in the centres. A hard runner of the ball, he had been a standout for his next Tigers club last season. I'm from Chimbu. Uh, my district is Sonomone Karomi. I brought up in Kundiawa town, stretch of Kundiawa town. And uh, I, end up in, uh, I start my football in Diction Oval, Kundiawa field, playing league there. And I was doing my, well, I'm doing my study at Unitech. I'm playing around Lee and Tigers and got me. Jokedi Bire is 21 years old and from Chimbu province, Karamui Salt Nomane district. The left center has been described by SPP and G Hunters coach Matthew Church as possessing the same aggression and aggressive line running like fellow Chimbu product and Melbourne Storm Premiership winning center Justin Olam. His speed and agility has coach Matthew Church licking his fingers at a chance to put him straight into the left center role at the Hunters. Uh, he reminds me so much of Justin as Joe Ketty Berry. Um, he's probably a bit bigger than Justin was when Justin was at the Hunters, um, but he's certainly explosive and um, yeah, he likes to play left centre and I guess that's where the, he reminds me so much of Justin being that, that shorter, stockier um, left centre that likes to play with a fair bit of a tent. So can't wait to get him into um, you know, some game situations and, and see how he handles the, the step up in the level. Apart from his explosive style of play, Jokedi is also following in the same path as former hunter Olam, with Bire concluding his studies at the University of Technology. I will be graduating in April 16th under Bachelor of Electrical Engineering. Bire has close links to Olam through family, but is yet to meet him in person. But Bire always makes time to watch Olam's superb footage online. Yeah, Justin Olam is my role model when I first been to Unitech since he is a student on Unitech also and he passed out to do it, making it into Antas. And each time he was perfect as, you know, when he just finished from studies, he make it into Antas squad and goes like that. That's what I'm following in football too. And I like to play like him, so I watch a lot of, you know, game for Justin Olam. And also, we are, he's, my big brother is also Justin Olam, schoolmate, so he encouraged me on that. And yeah, he's my role model too, sir. Bire says he is looking to make his district Karamui Salt Nomane and his local village proud. The, the district is Salt Nomane Karamui, but the village I'm from Kiari. Uh, that's the end part of Salt Nomane, so the very remote place. For Bire, coming from the furthest village of the district of Karamui Salt Nomane, he is dedicating this season to them. Dedicate this game, as I said, to the district. As we are a remote part, and most of when I come to town, uh, most of the People at Kundewa treat us as, uh, you know, we are from the back. That's why at one stage I want to, you know, make known to the this, uh, province that, uh, yeah, we, so, uh, somebody at that place can, you know, carry the flag and put it at the top of the, uh, put it at the country. So that's what my dream and aim for that. Fidelis Sukina, Trukai Sports. And that story wraps up Trukai Sports. Coming up next, the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for today and tomorrow in the New Guinea Islands region only. Mostly fine though, partly cloudy right across the region in Lorengau, Kavian, Kokoporabao, Kimbe, and Buka. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that's been the new sport and weather for today, Wednesday, the 27th of January 2021. On behalf of the news team, pleasant viewing. Thank you for your company. Bye for now.